Hi, my name is Kerry Hess. I'm an Australian artist and fashion illustrator. And this video is an introduction into painting with watercolour for complete beginners. Okay, so let's have a look at my basic setup here for painting in watercolour. The first thing I have is some watercolour paint. This is 300 GSM uh, rough textured cold pressed paper, which looks really beautiful when uh, it's not paper that you're scanning. It has like a, a textured surface. Um, and I love this kind of paper to look at in real life. Second of all, I have some watercolour pans, and this is one from Windsor & Newton, um, but you can find these in other brands as well. It's one of my favourites, and you can use these little trays here to wet your little pans and bring them over here and make them a bigger amount of watercolour. Uh, I also have here some watercolour tube paints, uh, which are work kind of differently to these but they are also lovely to have on hand. Here I have a little just plastic palette that I like to use when I'm working with these tube paints. So I would put out a colour and then make a more watery version of that colour so I have the two to work with. Uh, and I often use the bigger amounts of paint with this and the smaller amounts in specific little colours in this uh, pan palette here. I also have some brushes here and these are my favorite four brushes for painting in watercolor. We first have a wash brush and this is one from Art Spectrum and it's just one that's really great for painting large sections in a wash tone. Then I have this pointed brush which is great for also doing pointed sections and larger watery sections and this is a really versatile brush it's probably one that I use the most uh, it's I've used it so much that I can't see what number or brand it is but um, I'm sure you can see the shape there it's quite similar actually to this brush which is a Holcroft round number six uh, so this would be just a different size and this is also similar to the last but a little bit more detailed and pointy for smaller areas. And then I have a flat brush like this. This is a bright number eight Holcroft. And this is good for doing candy stripes or really straight lines uh, of a really even texture. So they're the four brushes that I generally would use in most of my work. Uh, I also have here just a spare piece of watercolor paper so I can test out um, what colour I'm actually mixing up before I paint it on my page and I always use that when I'm working. I have a little washer towel that I use to take some excess water out of my brush as I'm painting and I'm using that constantly um, while I'm working. I have two jars of water um, just because the water tends to get dirty quite quickly and having two jars of water is helpful to not have to constantly be getting up to change your water. And also I have some paper towel here which is useful for both creating highlights uh, if you forgot to leave a white space uh, as a highlight in your work you can kind of dab it, dab it out with this or you can kind of soak up little mistakes as you go with paper towel. This is really, really useful for when you make little errors as you go. Uh, and lastly, I have some masking tape, which I might use if I'm putting tape all around the outside of my piece, if I wanna tape it to uh, my desk or just have a border on the outside of my piece, which should just peel off and not ruin the paint. So those are the things that I have and let's just get started with a really basic look at how watercolour works. So I'm going to open up my pad and I've got my paper here and I'm going to add some 
masking tape along the top here. So the first thing we're going to look at is transparency in watercolour and just seeing how you can have so many different shades and tones with the same colour. So I've got this colour here, this um, magenta rose tone and I've already got this colour here uh, which is the same colour that I used the other day and I can actually reactivate that colour by just adding some water here. Watercolour is one of the few types of paints that you can let it dry in its tray and just reactivate it and it will come back to life. So I tend to not wash out my trays, I tend to let the paint dry and use the paint again and again and again. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that paint and just create a really, really concentrated wash of that colour in a little square here. So this is a really thick concentration of that magenta colour. Wash this out and then I'm going to just see how it looks with a tiny bit more water in there. It's still very thick in tone but a little bit lighter. So just adding water as I go to see how the transparency of this colour can be watered down and how many colours and tones you can get out of the one colour of paint. See I've put probably too much paint there. If you take the water out of your brush you can kind of take the paint back off the paper. I think this one probably needs a little bit more tone. And then we can really just mop that colour up there and peel these off to see just how many tones we can get out of this one shade of paint. So it goes from quite an opaque raspberry red colour all the way through to a really pale watery peach colour. So rather than adding white to our colour, which we sometimes do, but the main thing with watercolour is more about adding water rather than white, as you might do with a different type of paint. Okay. So now we're going to have a look at adding some water in here and bringing this purple tone back to life. I'm going to clean up my brush, check that this tone of peach. So we're going to look at how two different colours go when they merge together. I'm just painting a little kind of square here 
of this peach tone. Clean out my brush. And then if I pick up some of this purple tone, paint a square of that. As soon as they touch each other, you'll see how they kind of blend together. And we'll just let them blend together and see how they mix once they've touched. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at is painting wet on wet. So that is painting little space on the paper that is wet with hardly any color, almost just water. And seeing what happens when we put wet paint on a wet surface. So you can see how these little dots are making their own little patterns and that will happen in different degrees depending on how much water you have put on the surface and how long you have let that water soak into the paper. You can put in other different colors and while the paper is still wet, you can actually mix the colors on the page into kind of a pinky purple tone. And you'll see that the color won't really run. I'll do that in a different color actually. we do that in a circle, it's got a tiny bit of a purple tone in there actually. But if we add some little purple dots in there and we lift this up, it will move around but generally it won't run out of the spot that was already wet. So the colour tends to sit and concentrate where the page is wet. Okay, next we're going to look at uh, how to do some kind of thinner wet on dry lines. So you might use a brush like this for those and I'm going to go back into that pink tone and you can see that with watercolour you can have a really thin line when you're painting just directly on dry paper and then you can add water and make a wash out of that. And just adding a bit more water back into it will just make the paint come back to life and more workable again. And take that all the way down. Other things you can do are little drops of paint. So you might take that in a wash color, this kind of coral peach color. And the higher you drop your little droplets, the more you should get a little bit more of a texture like this. So if you drop your droplets really, really high, you'll get even more of a texture around the outside. And I think sometimes these work really well in a wash, cup, wash tone. Um, next, I'm going to do a little squiggly line. And while that's still wet, I can add a different color and see if that merges down into the S. I might need to add a little bit more water to make it run. So you can just let it run and it will do the job for you. Uh, lastly, I'm going to look at using this brush and do some candy stripes. 
in back in this pink tone. So just along here, you can do these really soft, straight candy stripes and you can add extra paint in a deeper version of that same hue to the ends and see how it kind of merges along that candy stripe if that's an effect you want to try. So going back to this one you can see that it's created a little a little texture um, amongst the two colors and if you don't want this to happen you have to paint one area first and wait till it's dried and then paint the other one rather than painting them next to each other uh, while they're still wet because you will always have this little merge section. So that is a basic look at how watercolor works. The best thing is to try out different colors, uh, make your own little guides, see what happens with the paint when you try all sorts of different things. And if you'd like to learn more about painting, you can have a look at kerryhess.com to find out about my masterclasses in painting fashion in both watercolor and acrylic paint.